living your life, your style. I'm Kate Longworth. Today, we're at the coolest place in the desert, the Coyotes Curling Club in Tempe, to learn more about this unique sport. But before we get sweeping, let's take a look at what's ahead on the show. We feature Via del Sol and all they do for the community. Plus a salon poised to make you look your best. And protecting the future water for all Arizonans. All that and much more coming your way on Arizona Living. We are here at the Coyotes Curling Club in Tempe to learn more about this unique sport. And here to give us a little insight is Mike Siggins. Thank you so much for joining us. And for those who don't know, what exactly is curling? Well, it's about a 500 year old Scottish sport and it's a little bit botchy, it's a little bit shuffleboard, except we do it with these giant 45 pound stones and the target's about 150 feet away. All right, so exactly what is the Coyotes Curling Club? So we are a curling facility down in Tempe and we're volunteer run and this is where you can come to curl in Arizona. So you're dedicated solely to the sport? That's correct. So how does it work? How do you come out here and play? Well, you can start with a different learn to curl. We have these drop-in events where you can come and you know, check the bucket list and give it a shot and throw a couple rocks, play a little game. Or if you want to get involved, there's also social leagues, competitive leagues, it kind of runs the gamut. But you can also take classes. That's right. So with these classes, um, what do they all entail? There's a couple different ways you can do it. Uh, we have these learn to curl, which are one night only events where you come in, learn about the sport, get you on the ice, get you throwing rocks and get you out of here in a couple hours. We also have other leagues that are built for people that are trying to integrate themselves into the club, where it's a, it's a five or six week session. You progress with your skills as you go across those five weeks. And at the end of it, you're, you're ready to get into a social league and have some fun. So tell me a little bit more about the league that's involved. Well, like I said before, we, we kind of run everything from competitive to social. Um, we have a junior house out there. Uh, we've got curlers in their 80s that are playing. So really anybody can play at any different skill level. We've got a league to fill them. So that's really unique. So sometimes with sports, it can be intimidating. You feel like you don't have the skill set or perhaps you're not in shape for it. Right. But would you say you guys have things that can accommodate people so they can feel comfortable out here? Absolutely. And in fact, we're in the, in the midst of breaking in about 100 new members right now. So wow. we, the, growing the membership is very important to us. So we want to make sure that we provide a space for everyone to play. And it's great. You guys are volunteer run and you guys are making this happen, literally created this facility. But you guys are also very successful. You were part of a team that went to the Olympic trials. Tell me about that experience. What was it like? It was a really cool experience. Uh, we played in the Olympic trial series to try and get a spot in the, the final four to try and qualify for the Olympics. It was up in Seattle. Um, it was something that I can, I can tell my daughter about and uh, just really cool to be a part of it. So your team and the club on the whole, you guys have achieved a lot of success. Yeah, it's, it's been a, a really crazy year. We actually had a, a senior team that won the U.S. national title and went to world championships. Uh, a team that I was on play, participated in the Olympic trial series and we also won a club national championship and we had two women's teams that have bronze medals at club nationals and also at senior women's nationals. So it was a crazy good year for us on the ice. And this is a hobby, a passion for you. So when people ask you, um, why is curling a great sport? What do you tell them? It's the people. Um, just like a lot of other people, I first started after seeing on the Olympics. I wanted to check the box, I wanted to throw a couple rocks, and I just fell in love with the people and the camaraderie and the social aspect of it. So clearly this is a fun social event, but is it also a workout? Oh, for sure. Uh, top level sweepers, they can burn 12 or 1300 calories in a two hour game. Wow, that's impressive. Well, thank you so much, Mike, for your time. I appreciate it. And if you would like more information on the sport of curling, be sure to head to the Coyotes Curling Club website. New season, new you. The experts at Salon Blissful have what it takes to help you feel and look your best. I started Salon Blissful just because I felt like being in the industry for 20 some odd years before opening a salon, I was just missing something and I knew that I had a passion to help other stylists and empower other stylists to grow and help them grow. And so we have an amazing program here that we help the stylists grow so they don't have to leave, they can actually just grow with us. With my experience, I just wanted to take all that and put it together and open somewhere where stylists would love to work. So treat them the way I would want to be treated in a salon. So that was my biggest thing and I reiterate that to my stylist all the time. I want to treat them the way that I would want to be treated working at a salon.
We want to keep them happy because in turn, if our stylists are happy, they will be happy where they're working and they'll create beautiful and amazing hair, skin, you know, whatever it is that we're creating here. We're a full service hair salon, med spa, so we do all esthetician services and skin services. And then we also have nurse injectors on staff. So we do all types of injectables for the face and skin. It's really fun atmosphere. All the girls are amazing to be around. The staff, even the customers, they're fun to be around. Um, it's just like walking into a nice, beautiful spa and being pampered from hair to skin and, you know, all your services. One of our exclusive treatments that we do here is the microneedling and the clients really love it because they see dramatic results with it. And not only with the microneedling treatments, we also send them home with a regimen of a skincare line. With high-end products, they definitely see amazing results in their skin and that's why they love coming to us. We do also have the Hydrofacial MD machine in here. It is a state-of-the-art machine that's amazing. So it basically is a, a, a facial, but it's all in one with a handheld device that, you know, it has a vortex fusion that gives really great results for a facial and infuses serums and leaves you glowing at the end. Salon Blissful has the best of the best. Best stylists and best estheticians. I've been very happy here. The results since I've started the treatments have been really great. I've had reduced pore size, skin tone has been even, um, acne scars have started to go away, and the pigment of the skin has been kind of going away and lightening up and just overall becoming more even and clear and, and smooth. What I love about the, working with the estheticians here is not only do they do a great service, but then they also help you um, improve your overall skincare routine and just make sure that um, even after you leave, your skin's gonna continue to be taken care of. We have four locations across the valley. Our original one started in Mesa in the East Valley off the 60 in Sossaman, and we have three locations here in Peoria. This one here that we're at is 83rd Avenue and Happy Valley Road, so we're North Peoria, and then we have two on 83rd Avenue and Thunderbird Road, so over in the Arrowhead area. We would love for you to come on by and get you booked with a consultation, and we'd love, hope to see you soon. We're staying cool with more Arizona Living from the Coyotes Curling Club right after this. We explore the measures being taken to preserve our water supply and helping the community get the health services they need. makes the dream work. Central Arizona Project and Cox Communication are sharing their commitment to environmental and sustainability issues that have an impact on our community. For many years, Cox and the Central Arizona Project have shared a commitment to environmental and sustainability issues. We're standing alongside the 336 mile canal that begins in Lake Havasu at the California Arizona border and extends to south of Tucson. The CAP system includes 14 pumping plants that lift water nearly 3,000 feet across the length of the system, as well as 10 siphons and four tunnels. Our system also includes Lake Pleasant, which serves as CAP's storage reservoir. Cox Conserves is Cox's national sustainability program that has been instrumental in driving meaningful progress towards environmental change. Inside our company and within the communities we serve, with nearly 140 million invested in more than 400 projects, we're on track to meet our aggressive Cox Conserves goals to become zero waste to landfill by 2024 and becoming carbon and water neutral by 2034. Cox is a global leader in sustainability and strives to solve the environmental crisis through key partnerships across the country. Additionally, Cox employees have volunteered 15,000 hours to help environmental partners in 2019 and 2020, reducing 12 tons of carbon, diverting 58,000 pounds of waste from landfills, and conserving 9,200 gallons of water in the communities we serve. Employees are a tremendous source of knowledge and ideas to help us achieve water and carbon neutrality. Partnerships help keep the water flowing. Our water professionals ensure the reliable delivery of Colorado River water to Maricopa, Pinal, and Pima counties through collaborative efforts to sustain our water supply for future generations of Arizonans. Our efforts to become water neutral will have a meaningful impact on not only drinking water, but also water-related ecosystems. 
By 2034, we will save 392 million gallons of water, a total water savings enough to fill 10 million bathtubs. Is there a lot of planning involved in ensuring reliable water deliveries for future Arizonans? Absolutely. We need to work together on a Colorado River system that is resilient in the face of climate change. CAP also has been storing water underground through a process called recharge. The intent is that during periods of reduced water supply, these underground storage reservoirs can be recovered. Recharge also improves groundwater supply, enhances water quality through natural filtration, and prevents land subsidence. CAP has a climate adaption plan with the goal of sustaining our water supplies in the era of climate change. There are several things we're doing to prepare for the future. In the near term, increasing water conservation to benefit Lake Mead through local and interstate partnerships. In the midterm, preparing to move non-Colorado River water through the system when necessary. In the long term, looking into efforts including desalinization, water exchanges and reuse, and we'll continue to collaborate with others locally, regionally, and nationally. Valle del Sol has been providing health services since 1970. In honor of Hispanic Heritage Month, let's highlight how they've been helping the community. Valle del Sol started over 50 years ago, so 1970. The goal was to establish uh, social services, uh, behavioral health services primarily, substance abuse services. The main goal at that point was to serve the veteran community that was returning um, from the Vietnam War. At that point, there was a lack of services for the Latino community, so that was the main goal, to have a, a place for the community to come and be served in their language and you know, with people that spoke Spanish. Throughout the years, there's been a need for additional services, so we started offering primary care, and the whole point of that was to integrate not only the physical health, but also the mental health, um, behavioral health, social aspects. But um, the goal, again, is for us to be able to not just only address the one thing, right? We want to be able to be here for the community in, in, in terms of everything. It's better to really find connections, um, and that way the person feels supported and they, they don't feel like they're alone when it comes to, to their health. Valle del Sol is open to anybody in the community. We do serve a majority of Hispanic and Latinos. The ailments or the chronic diseases that we see a lot, specifically in our Hispanic community, are things like high blood pressure, hypertension, um, diabetes, um, high cholesterol, um, depression, anxiety, these are all things that we as Latinos suffer from and are the things that we mostly come and, and see the doctor for. Here at Valle del Sol we also offer not just primary care services for adults but we also offer pediatric health. Dr. Wooten, our pediatrician, can see them for their well visit if they were behind on their developmental milestones. Then Dr. Wooten can address that. He can uh, set them up with a catch-up schedule for their immunizations. They can get their flu shot, they can get their COVID shot, um, all in the same uh, visit. When it comes to Valle, um, the, the awesome part and, and something that, that I love about Valle is that when you come here, we don't only talk about the one need, right? We, we love to, to have um, the family identify. So, ¿quiénes son las personas importantes para ti? And the reason why we ask that is because when it comes to, to health, you know, professionals can tell you what to do. But if you get the buy-in from the family and the family understands, then la abuelita, el tío, everybody will help address those needs. Los invito a que sean pacientes de Valle del Sol. We have different locations. We're across the valley. We don't say no to anybody. We don't turn people away. If we don't provide services, we will help you connect. But for the most part, we're a really good place to come and get all of the services that you need. So come to Valle. We're sliding your way with more Arizona living from the Coyotes Curling Club right after this. We talk ways to help your child deal with stress. Plus, we show you what a broom and a stone have to do with curling. Arizona Theater Company presents The Wickham's Christmas at Pemberley. Don't miss this sequel to last season's holiday show. Visit ATC.org for show tickets starting at just $25.
Whether it's school, extracurricular activities, or just daily life, kids are under a lot of stress. The experts at Lifeline PCS are here to help manage that stress. Adults will notice that their child or teen is, is having issues if they are struggling with overarching themes of communication or not being aware. There are changes that go on with um, kids usually due to hormonal changes. Um, those are normal and natural, but some are excessive or sudden. They will notice changes in sleep and appetite, changes in communication styles towards yourself, authority figures or others, maybe even social isolation rather than engagement. Additionally, watch for negative behaviors like excessive anger or unexpected weeping. Take threats of suicide and self-harm very seriously. Self-harm and suicidality are not attention-seeking, they're connection-seeking. They may not have the words to express themselves. It is important to provide your child or teen with someone they can trust, like family, friends, teachers, and counselors to reassure them that it is okay to bring up problems or emotions that may be bothering them. Speaking to a provider can help guide you in determining signs and differences. Social media is a double-edged sword. If used in moderation as a means of communication, entertainment, or to spread awareness, it's great. However, it, it can be negatively impacting on mental health because of a variety of reasons, um, like bullying or social comparisons or um, physical appearance, um, where advertising is involved, where it can it can decrease self-esteem. Research supports social media being an associated factor to the increase of anxiety and eating disorders along with depression. Social media can have a heavy influence whether it is positive or negative, so it is important to understand how it is impacting you, your household, and your relationships. The COVID-19 pandemic is a key factor to the rise of substance abuse and other various addictions. Working in the mental health field, we have seen a rise in the increase of various addictions, emotional and physical abuse. Before the pandemic, many have already been struggling with addictions and we have seen an increase due to social distancing, lack of support, and other added stressors, including the rise in homelessness and poverty. Counseling is a great tool because it gives people that validation, it gives people that support system, it gives people the ability to recognize their needs for growth and change and then be able to grow and change, whereas they might not have that on their own. For more information, please go to our website or call and we would be glad to help. Just a stone throw away, we have more Arizona Living from the Coyotes Curling Club. I'm getting the 411 on what's needed in Curling 101. Arizona Opera presents its 2022-2023 season with performances in Phoenix and Tucson. Don't miss the unforgettable music, drama, and spectacle. Purchase your season tickets or single tickets today at azopera.org. Coyotes Curling Club. The ice isn't quite ready yet for people to be on it, but with the season just around the corner, we wanted to talk with club president Mark Anderson to get the 101 on what you need for curling. What equipment is required? Well, the three basic things you need for curling is the curling stone or curling rock, curling brooms, and curling shoes. And this doesn't exactly look like a rock you just find uh, laying around. No, this is a very specialized 42 pound solid granite stone that comes from one of two quarries in the world, one off the coast of Scotland or a quarry in Wales in the United Kingdom. Um, it's a unique, very dense stone that can't be cracked by throwing rocks up and down. <laughs> that, that's handy for sure. And then? Of course, we need a broom. 
uh, this is for sweeping. This is a modern day curling broom, uh, carbon fiber composite, you know, very lightweight, very strong, with a head that is used to melt the ice in front of the stone wow. so the f stone will travel further. Well, so when you said broom, I was kind of thinking this. Yeah, this is an old school curling broom. This is how it started in, back in the days. Uh, curling was an outside sport. You had to sweep the snow, the sticks, everything out of the way so your rock could trans you know, move its way down the ice. So do you provide equipment for people? So when you come to a curling event, whether it's a corporate or private event, um, we supply all the equipment so you don't need anything. Even when you start in a league, we will provide brooms and the necessary equipment. That's terrific. And uh, we are you know, used to desert weather. So when you come in here, how can people be prepared for the cool ice? Well, it's cold. It's, it's 42 <laughs> degrees in here. You need to dress in layers. Um, because you will be spending a lot of time here on the ice and uh, once you start sweeping you'll warm up and sometimes people shed clothing once that happens but come dressed warm. That's and how do you make sure when you're out on the ice you're not <coughs> sliding or only sliding when you want to? Okay well that's why we have special curling shoes so these look like kind of standard sports shoes not mm -hmm. particularly stylish but they have a grippy surface on the bottom here that allows you to walk on the ice and then when you deliver a stone your curling shoe has a removable gripper Oh, and wow. you see a Teflon surface. This allows you to slide out on the ice. Oh, very smooth. Very, very slippery. Very slippery. But that's what allows you to deliver the stone with a shoe. Uh, it looks like you guys have everything people need to survive and have fun and come out here and try curling. So when people are like, should I do this? What do you say? I say absolutely. Don't wait. You know, give it a try. It's, it's probably the most fun sport you can have. Um, especially living in a desert. Well, it's great, Mark. You guys provide the lessons people need, the equipment people need. Now they just need to come out and have some fun. That's correct. Thank you so much, Mark, for your time. And if you would like more information, please visit the Coyotes Curling Club website. We want to thank all of the volunteers at the Coyotes Curling Club for having us out here today. We had a blast. And thank you for joining us. I'm Kate Longworth. We'll see you next time on Arizona Living, your life, your style, where we help you live your best life.